Can't do my job if you turn him loose. Dan, those fellas I was talking. The creation of the 1958 TV series Lawman involved a fascinating casting process. Each actor's role was carefully chosen, considering their auditions and chemistry tests. For the lead role, John Russell was an easy choice. With his solid experience in westerns, he brought the necessary gravitas to the character of Marshal Dan Troop. His stern yet compassionate demeanor made him perfect for this classic role. Peter Brown, relatively new to acting, was cast as Deputy Johnny McKay. His boyish charm and eagerness to learn won over the producers. They saw his potential and believed he could grow into the role throughout the series. The chemistry between Russell and Brown was evident from their first scenes together. Their contrasting personalities, the seasoned marshal and the inexperienced deputy, created a dynamic tension that added depth to their relationship. As for the other characters, the casting directors looked for actors who could embody the spirit of the Old West. They wanted a mix of seasoned professionals and fresh faces to keep the show interesting. For instance, they chose Peggy Castle as Lily Merrill, the local saloon owner with a heart of gold. Her contrasting character added a touch of femininity and romance to the otherwise male-dominated world of Lawman. The casting process for Lawman was not just about finding actors who could play their parts. It was about creating a believable world that would resonate with audiences. Each character, from the marshal to the townsfolk, played a crucial role in bringing this classic TV series to life. Uh, you're too smart for a lawman, Marshal. The 1958 TV series Lawman was brought to life by director Richard Lang. Known for his innovative approach, Lang drew inspiration from classic westerns and the golden age of television. He aimed to create a show that was both entertaining and thought-provoking, blending action with deep character development. Lang's directorial vision was characterized by a unique style that emphasized visual storytelling. He often used wide shots to capture the vastness of the American West, and close-ups to highlight the emotions of the characters. This approach created a sense of intimacy within the vast landscape, making the story more relatable to the audience. In collaboration with the cast and crew, Lang fostered a creative environment that encouraged experimentation and risk-taking. He worked closely with the actors, guiding them through their performances and encouraging them to bring their own ideas to the table. This collaborative spirit resulted in a show that was not only visually stunning, but also emotionally resonant. Lang's creative influences included directors like John Ford and Howard Hawks, as well as writers like Ernest Hemingway. He admired their ability to tell compelling stories while also exploring complex themes such as morality, honor, and the human condition. These influences are evident in Lawman, where each episode delves into the personal struggles of the characters, providing a deeper understanding of their motivations and desires. In addition to his visual style and thematic explorations, Lang also paid close attention to the technical aspects of filmmaking. He worked closely with the cinematographer to create a distinct look for the show, using lighting and camera angles to enhance the storytelling. The result is a classic TV series that has stood the test of time captivating audiences with its compelling narrative and stunning visuals. I'm gonna give you a last chance to do one decent thing before you die. Let's settle for the drink, huh? Lawman is a 1958 TV series that you might have watched before. It's a classic show that has many interesting facts associated with it. You might find some of them funny, shocking, and even a little sad. The series features several roles, but there might be one that stands out to you more than the others. Out of all the characters, which one was your favorite? As you watch this video, you'll discover some surprising trivia about this show. From behind the scenes stories to little known facts, we'll take a deep dive into the world of Lawman. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, without further ado, let's explore the fascinating world of Lawman. Stay tuned for some exciting revelations. This shotgun will. Well, you wouldn't dare use it. In the late 1950s, the production of the TV series Lawman brought with it a unique set of challenges and innovations. The show's crew had to create a whole universe, an 1870s frontier town, in the middle of bustling 20th century Hollywood. To begin, the set design was a crucial aspect of this classic. The team built an entire town, Laramie, from the ground up, complete with saloons, hotels, and residences. They paid meticulous attention to detail, ensuring that every storefront, door, and window hinge reflected the era's authenticity. 
They even went as far as aging the wooden structures to give them a more worn down, lived in appearance. The locations for filming this western drama were primarily on sound stages at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California. However, they also ventured out to Vasquez Rocks Natural Area Park in Agua Dulce, California, for location shots. This picturesque park offered towering rock formations and vast open spaces, which perfectly captured the rugged, untamed beauty of the American West. Logistical challenges abounded during the production of the show. For instance, the crew had to transport cast and crew members, equipment, and livestock back and forth between the studio and the location shoots. Additionally, they had to ensure that the set remained pristine and authentic for each shooting day, which required constant maintenance and upkeep. Despite these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques and technologies to streamline their processes. For example, they used a new type of paint that could withstand the harsh studio lights without fading or cracking. They also implemented a more efficient scheduling system, which allowed them to shoot scenes out of sequence, saving both time and money. In conclusion, the production of Lawman was a significant undertaking, requiring a tremendous amount of creativity, hard work, and innovation. The set design, locations, and logistical challenges all contributed to the show's unique charm and enduring legacy. Finish with him, I'll get you. If you finish with troop sellers, I'll be waiting. Now why don't you settle down and play some cards at checker? In the late 1950s, a classic Western television series, Lawman, made its debut airing from 1958 to 1962. This show became a staple of the genre, captivating audiences with its compelling stories and complex characters. The series follows the life of Marshal Dan Troop, played by John Russell, as he maintains law and order in the fictional town of Laramie, Wyoming. Born on January 3, 1920, in South Carolina, Russell's acting career spanned over four decades, with Lawman being one of his most memorable roles. Throughout the series, he embodied the strong, silent type, using his imposing presence to keep the peace in Laramie. His portrayal of Marshal Dan Troop earned him praise and admiration from fans and critics alike. Lawman also starred Peter Brown as Deputy Johnny McKay, who became Troop's right-hand man. Brown, born in New York in 1935, brought a sense of youthful energy and determination to the role, making him a fan favorite. Together, Russell and Brown created a dynamic duo that kept viewers hooked week after week. The show's supporting cast was equally impressive, featuring talented actors such as Peggy Castle, who played the role of Lily Merrill, the local saloon owner with a heart of gold. Castle's performance added depth and complexity to the character, making her more than just a stereotypical saloon girl. Lawman's writing was also noteworthy, with each episode exploring different aspects of life in the Wild West from bank robberies and stagecoach holdups to saloon brawls and range wars. The show covered a wide range of topics, keeping viewers on the edge of their seats. Despite its success, Lawman remains somewhat underrated in the annals of television history. However, its enduring legacy is evident in the many Western shows and movies that followed in its footsteps. Lawman's influence can still be seen today, with its themes of law and order, justice, and the struggle between good and evil remaining as relevant as ever. In conclusion, Lawman is a classic Western television series that deserves recognition for its compelling storytelling, complex characters, and talented cast. Whether you're a fan of the Western genre, or simply looking for a good show to watch, Lawman is definitely worth checking out. What, Trix, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm just gonna pow this off. You're too smart for a lawman, Mark. In the late 1950s, Lawman, a groundbreaking TV series, graced the screens and captivated audiences with its gripping narratives and compelling characters. A significant aspect of this classic's appeal was its masterful use of music to complement the emotional tone and narrative. The show's composers and musicians artfully wove together a soundtrack that heightened the viewer's experience and left an indelible mark on television history. Carl Brandt, Lawman's musical director, led a team of talented composers and musicians to create a score that would enhance the show's dramatic moments and highlight its emotional depth. Brandt, a seasoned professional in the industry, understood the power of music and storytelling and carefully crafted each piece to serve the storyline. The Lawman soundtrack was characterized by its blend of traditional Western themes and innovative compositions. The use of strings, brass, and percussion created a rich and dynamic sound that captivated audiences and elevated the series' overall quality. Brandt's team drew inspiration from the vast landscapes and rugged frontier life depicted in the show, 
creating a musical tapestry that resonated with viewers. One of the most memorable musical moments in Lawman was the opening theme. Composed by Dominic Frontier, the theme song was a masterclass in melding traditional Western elements with a contemporary sound. The haunting harmonica melody, punctuated by dramatic strings and percussion, perfectly encapsulated the show's themes of law, order, and the human struggle for justice in the Wild West. Frontier, who later became an accomplished film and television composer, drew upon his extensive musical background to create the iconic Lawman theme. Having studied composition and orchestration at the Juilliard School of Music, Frontier was well equipped to craft a piece that would become synonymous with the series. The score's ability to complement the narrative and emotional tone of Lawman cannot be overstated. Intense, action-packed scenes, the music swelled with intensity, driving the narrative forward and heightening the viewer's sense of anticipation. During moments of quiet reflection, the score softened, allowing the character's emotions to take center stage. In addition to the original score, Lawman also featured an array of popular songs from the era. These tunes, carefully selected to fit the show's themes and settings, further enriched the viewing experience. The inclusion of such tracks as Rawhide and Ghost Riders in the Sky not only added to the show's authenticity, but also tapped into the collective consciousness of the time, creating a shared experience for viewers. The creation of the Lawman score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort, with composers, musicians, and music supervisors working together to ensure that the music served the story and the characters. The result was a musical experience that not only complemented the visual elements of the show, but also stood on its own as a testament to the power of music and storytelling. In conclusion, the music of Lawman played a crucial role in the show's success, providing an emotional backdrop that heightened the narrative and resonated with audiences. Through the masterful work of composers and musicians, the Lawman soundtrack became an indelible part of television history, leaving a lasting impact on the world of television and film music. Come on in. In the TV series Lawman, the main character, Johnny, faced a tragic loss early in life when his parents were killed. He was then raised by two family friends, referred to as Uncle Jess and Uncle Joe. Edgar Buchanan portrayed Uncle Jess, and Frank Ferguson played Uncle Joe. The show's depiction of the weather in Laramie, Wyoming was notable for its accuracy. The characters were often seen wearing large, heavy coats due to the cooler climates in the state. This was a more accurate reflection of the actual average temperatures in Wyoming than other series set in the state, such as the Virginian or Laramie, which more frequently depicted the weather as warm. Emery Parnell, who played a recurring role as the bartender on Lawman, was a prolific American character actor. He appeared in many B-movies and had regular spots in Universal's Ma and Pa Kettle series. Parnell was known for playing hardy, jovial types or perpetually mystified police officers, as well as prison wardens, heavy fathers, and outright villains. <laughs> One of the most memorable scenes in Lawman comes early in the pilot episode when Marshal Dan Troop rides into Laramie, Wyoming, after a long day of chasing outlaws. As he enters the bustling town square, children playing, and townsfolk going about their business come to a halt watching him pass by with curiosity and apprehension. This moment encapsulates the loneliness and isolation that often accompany law enforcement work, something Troop knows all too well. Director Eves Dasson masterfully uses wide shots to capture both the scope of the town and its inhabitants reacting to Troop's arrival. He then cuts to close-ups of John Russell's face as Troop takes in his surroundings, showing us just how alone he feels despite being surrounded by people. Cinematographer William H. Clothier enhances this feeling through muted colors and soft lighting, giving the scene a melancholic tone. John Russell's understated yet powerful performance sells the audience on Troop's weariness and determination. His steely gaze speaks volumes about the hardships he has faced and will continue to confront during his time in Laramie. According to Russell himself, he aimed to portray Troop as a man who believes deeply in what he does, but doesn't take pleasure in it. This scene had a profound effect on viewers, establishing Marshal Dan Troop as a complex character struggling between upholding justice and maintaining personal relationships. Its haunting imagery and poignant performances set the stage for the rest of the series, ensuring that audiences would remain captivated week after week. Stick to your guns, Dan. I am going to write an editorial for today's edition. In the third season of this classic, 
Both main characters, Dan and Johnny, faced numerous injuries while dealing with criminals. Dan was shot in Astounding four times, including a memorable instance where he was injured in his gun hand and had to switch shooting hands. Meanwhile, Johnny was injured five times but wasn't shot. Interestingly, even though the production company began toning down the violence during this period, the number of fatalities remained consistent. Dan killed 22 people in both seasons 2 and 3, while Johnny's kill count decreased from 10 to 5. As for those wounded by Dan and Johnny, it also stayed relatively stable. Dan shot and injured two individuals per season, whereas Johnny's totals rose slightly from 1 to 3. Despite these figures, the studio attempted to reduce explicit violence by having the villains merely wounded rather than killed after being shot. Peter Brown, who played Johnny, demonstrated exceptional skills off-screen as well. During the early 1960s, an American magazine organized a quick-draw competition amongst various Western TV personalities. Brown emerged victorious, earning him the recognition as the fastest gun in Hollywood. With his remarkable speed and talent, he truly embodied the spirit of the Wild West. There's something I gotta tell you. Now. Trouble? No, not that kind. The 1958 TV series Lawman had a significant cultural and social impact during its time, influencing popular culture and sparking conversations around relevant issues. This classic Western focused on the life of Marshal Dan Troop, portrayed by John Russell, who maintained law and order in Laramie, Wyoming. Audiences were captivated by the moral dilemmas presented in each episode, often revolving around right versus wrong, and justice served through sometimes unconventional means. The show struck a chord with viewers due to its realistic depiction of frontier life, which differed from other westerns airing at the time. By focusing on the intricacies of maintaining peace rather than glorifying violence, it prompted discussions surrounding the true nature of justice and morality. Additionally, strong character development allowed for exploration of complex relationships between individuals living in close proximity under harsh conditions. Lawman also introduced innovative storytelling techniques, including serialized plots alongside standalone episodes. This format breakthrough enabled deeper engagement with recurring characters while still delivering episodic resolutions. Furthermore, featuring diverse cast members challenged stereotypes common in Western television shows, contributing to more inclusive representation both then and now. Moreover, the series inspired future productions that built upon its thoughtful approach to storytelling. Echoes of Lawman can be seen in modern dramas, where nuanced characters navigate complicated ethical landscapes. Influence from this classic extends beyond television into literature, films, and even video games, demonstrating its lasting imprint on popular culture. As society evolved throughout the years following Lawman, so did discourse regarding various topics initially explored in the series. Issues like gun control, racial equality, and gender roles gained prominence in national conversations, allowing contemporary audiences to appreciate the prescient themes woven throughout this timeless tale. Ultimately, Lawman transcends being merely entertainment, serving as a reflection of societal values and mores during its era, and continuing to do so today. What's that? Letting her think you were a husband. Thing like that can mean a lot to a woman. In the second season of this classic, both main characters, Dan and Johnny, faced numerous injuries. Dan was injured a total of three times and shot on four occasions, while Johnny suffered six injuries and three gunshots. They injured and shot multiple people, with Dan's record being 22 people and Johnny's 10. Their most eventful episode was the 18th, where they shot four people. Moving on to the fourth season, Dan experienced two injuries and three gunshots, while Johnny was injured seven times but avoided being shot. Dan shot and injured 11 people and killed 19, while Johnny shot and injured five, killing nine. This season's most lethal episode was the ninth, where Dan and Johnny shot five people and Lily claimed her first victim. Sadly, Lily was shot in the second episode. Peter Brown, who played Johnny, passed away in March 2016, followed by John Russell, who portrayed Dan in January 1991, and Peggy Castle, who played Lily in August 1973. The cast members who brought these characters to life are no longer with us. Marshall, uh, I've been thinking I might change my Lawman, the 1958 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show's authentic portrayal of frontier life and its complex characters were praised. John Derrick, who played the lead role of Marshal Dan Troop, 
was particularly commended for his strong and understated performance. The series was also recognized with several award nominations. In 1959, it received an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Western Series, and Derek was nominated for Best Continuing Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Dramatic or Comedy Series. Although the show did not win in either category, these nominations highlighted the quality of the series and its star's talent. Additionally, Lawman was appreciated for its high production values and realistic sets, which added to the show's overall appeal. Audiences were drawn to the show's gritty depiction of law and order in the Old West, and the series' impressive ratings reflected this. The critical reception and awards nominations for Lawman were significant for those involved in the show. For Derek, the nominations were a testament to his acting abilities and helped establish him as a leading man in the industry. For the show's creators, the positive reviews and nominations were a validation of their vision for the series and their commitment to creating a high-quality Western. Overall, Lawman's critical reception and awards nominations are a reflection of the show's enduring legacy as a classic Western and its impact on the genre. The series' authenticity, complex characters, and high production values continue to resonate with audiences today, making it a beloved and enduring part of television history. My side still ache from the last yarn you told. <laughs> this is a good one. At the start of Lawman, a feline companion shared the office space with Dan and Johnny. However, the cat vanished as the first season progressed, leaving viewers wondering about its fate. Actor John Russell, who played Dan Troop, recognized the need to project greater age and wisdom beyond his actual 37 years. Thus, he collaborated with the makeup department to add gray highlights to his hair and deepened his voice to convey maturity. Meanwhile, Dan Sheridan appeared as Jake, the bartender at the Birdcage Saloon, whose surname, Summers, was revealed just once over the course of the series. Eggles, let's get that sapling. During the filming of this classic lawman, the crew faced many challenges. For instance, John Russell, who played the lead role of Lieutenant John Beeman, was known for his strict adherence to realism. He often insisted on performing his own stunts, which led to some tense moments on set. In one episode, a scene required Russell to jump off a moving stagecoach. Despite the stunt team's warnings, Russell was adamant about doing it himself. After several takes, he successfully executed the stunt, but not without a few close calls. His dedication, however, added an authentic touch to his performance. On the other hand, Peter Brown, who played Deputy Marshal Johnny McKay, was the complete opposite. He was known for his light-hearted nature and often kept the set buzzing with his humor. His antics once led to an unscripted moment when he accidentally discharged his prop gun, causing a brief panic on set. Fortunately, it was only a blank round, and Brown's quick thinking diffused the situation, turning a potentially dangerous moment into a memorable anecdote. The show's production design was also a subject of much interest. The set for Lancer, the local saloon, was a marvel to behold. It was built with such detail that it felt like a real-life establishment. The bar was stocked with real bottles of liquor, and the poker tables were set with authentic chips and cards. This attention to detail helped create an immersive atmosphere, enhancing the show's overall quality. Moreover, the show's theme song, composed by Bernard Herrmann, was another highlight. Herrmann, known for his work on films like Psycho and Vertigo, brought his unique style to Lawman. The haunting melody, played on a solo trumpet, became synonymous with the show and is still remembered fondly today. In conclusion, the making of Lawman was filled with compelling behind-the-scenes stories, from the cast dedication to realism and humor to the intricate set design and memorable theme song. These anecdotes offer a personal glimpse into the experiences of the cast and crew during the film's production, adding another layer of interest to this classic television series. <laughs> In an effort to draw more female viewers, the producers of this classic television series Lawman made a deliberate choice in the second season. They had Peter Brown, who played Johnny McKay, leave his shirt unbuttoned more often. This decision was likely motivated by the belief that a more relaxed and informal appearance would appeal to a broader audience. The show's first season saw both Dan Troop, played by John Russell, and Johnny McKay sustain injuries. Dan was injured a total of six times and shot twice, while Johnny was injured four times but never shot. Dan's more interesting injuries included being mauled by a bear and hit by a tree being used as a wagon jack. 
When it came to using their firearms, Dan and Johnny were both formidable. Dan shot and injured seven people and shot and killed 24, while Johnny shot and injured three people and shot and killed 12. In one episode, they shot and killed five people, marking the highest number of fatalities in a single episode during the first season. Interestingly, Dan had a brother named Clay, portrayed by James Drury. Unfortunately, Clay's character was only introduced in the second season after the producers had already made the decision to have Peter Brown leave his shirt unbuttoned to attract more female viewers. In conclusion, Lawman was a television series that featured two main characters who were both skilled in handling firearms and sustaining injuries. The producers made a deliberate effort in the second season to attract more female viewers, resulting in Peter Brown's character leaving his shirt unbuttoned more often. Dan also had a brother named Clay, who was introduced in the second season and portrayed by James Drury. That's a hard thing to do. Well, mighty hard to understand too. Now me, I couldn't do a thing like that if I could. The television series Lawman, which first aired in 1958, holds a significant place in film history. This classic Western drama, created by John Russell and set in Laramie, Texas, offered viewers a unique look into the life of a lawman named Johnny McKay. Unlike many other Westerns of the time, Lawman focused on the challenges and moral dilemmas faced by those tasked with upholding the law in a frontier town. The show's innovative approach had a profound impact on future filmmaking. By emphasizing character development and complex storytelling over action and violence, Lawman helped pave the way for more nuanced portrayals of the American West. Subsequent Westerns, such as Deadwood and Longmire, owe much to the groundwork laid by this influential series. Moreover, Lawman served as inspiration for numerous writers and directors working in the genre today. Its thoughtful exploration of themes like justice, morality, and community continues to resonate with audiences and inform modern storytelling. Indeed, one could argue that the legacy of Lawman lives on in every contemporary Western that seeks to delve beneath the surface of the traditional cowboy narrative. All right, then, you stay here. All of you stay here on this so-called Dr. Say-So. In the TV series Lawman, the writing credit sometimes appears as W. Hermanos. This unusual byline is actually a code, indicating that the script was previously used in another production, with Hermanos serving as a Spanish translation of Brothers, referring to the Warner Brothers who founded the studio. The main character, Johnny, has quite the tumultuous relationship with his job as deputy. Throughout the series, he resigns from his position on three separate occasions. The reasons behind these departures range from personal identity crises to disputes over taking credit for kills. Ultimately, it seems that each departure stems from a deep internal struggle with what it means to be a lawman. Furthermore, actor Adam West appeared in the role of Doc Holliday on multiple occasions across different television shows. Specifically, he played the iconic figure on Sugarfoot, Colt 45, and in this classic Western drama. Each performance added its own unique flair to the character, leaving audiences wanting more. Overall, Lawman offers viewers a look into the complexities of life as a deputy, exploring themes of morality, honor, and self-doubt through compelling storylines and dynamic performances. Despite facing numerous challenges, both personally and professionally, Johnny continues to persevere in his pursuit of justice, making for a thrilling viewing experience. In the late 1950s to early 1960s, the entertainment industry saw the release of numerous Western-themed TV shows. One such production, known simply as Lawman, stood out for its distinct lack of crossover stars from other Warner Brothers productions. This separation allowed the show to establish its own identity amidst a sea of similar programs. The creators of Lawman also took advantage of contemporary marketing strategies by releasing 11 comic book adaptations between 1958 and 1962. These tie-in publications offered fans an alternative way to engage with their favorite characters and stories outside of the weekly television broadcasts. An amusing detail about the show involves its consistent use of a particular sound effect. Regardless of whether a character stumbled while on horseback or ducked behind cover during a gunfight, the resulting thud heard upon impact remained exactly the same. While seemingly insignificant, these small details added consistency and familiarity for viewers week after week. Overall, Lawman carved out a unique space within the genre through thoughtful storytelling, savvy promotional efforts, 
and quirky production choices, all contributing factors that continue to captivate audiences even today. Did Lawman, the 1958 TV series, leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories. Perhaps it was the gripping narratives that kept you glued to the screen, or maybe John Russell's powerful portrayal of Marshall Dan Troop resonated with you. This classic may have even inspired your interest in Western films and television shows. Whatever your connection, we encourage you to share your thoughts, feelings, and memories related to this iconic piece of media. Reflect on what made Lawman special for you. Was it the captivating storylines, the memorable characters, or the way it depicted life in Laramie, Wyoming? By engaging in this conversation, we can all appreciate the enduring influence of this acclaimed TV series. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more opportunities to explore timeless productions together. Let's celebrate our shared enthusiasm for quality cinema by delving into the rich tapestry woven by Lawman.